Good day everyone, my name is Inye Oluwa Ruth Okolate. I am a second year biology major at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Today I will be presenting my research project on the functional characterization of NH3 and insulin in the zebrafish kidney. Maintaining body fluid osmotic homeostasis is a very vital characteristic ability of every living organism. Sodium ion and water balance maintenance and regulation are key to maintaining this body fluid osmotic homeostasis and this is dependent upon regulated transport across polarized epithelial cell membranes. Now one very important protein protein in the proximal tubule of the kidney, which is largely responsible for the majority of sodium water reabsorption, which plays a key role in maintaining osmotic homeostasis, is the sodium proton exchanger 3, NHE3. NHE3 achieves this, achieves sodium water reabsorption in the proximal tubule of the kidney by utilizing an inward sodium ion concentration gradient generated by the sodium potassium ATPase to extrude hydrogen ions against this electrochemical gradient, as shown in this image right here. Since NHE3 is so important in reabsorption of sodium ion in the proximal tubule, small changes in its activity can have a large impact on osmotic homeostasis, biological function, and biological processes, such as blood pressure and blood volume. So, uh, Increase in NH3 activity can lead to a large increase in blood pressure, and a drop in NH3 activity can lead to a drop in blood volume and blood pressure. It is already well known that insulin signaling regulates blood glucose levels. However, previous studies also suggest that insulin signaling plays a role in the proximal tubule transport through a stimulatory effect on NH3 expression and activity. Now, this stimulatory effect on NH3 expression and activity means that insulin could lead to an increase or decrease in NH3 activity, which, as previously discussed, would have a great impact on body functions and processes such as blood volume and blood pressure. However, the signaling mechanisms that link insulin to the stimulation of an increase in NH3 activity in proximal tubule transport remain unclear. My study, the goal of my study was to determine the effects of insulin on NH3 expression using zebrafish as a model organism. Why use zebrafish? We use zebrafish as a model organism because they are cost effective, they are small in size, they're easy to maintain and breed in the lab because they uh, produce larger than 100 um, embryos upon each breeding, and because they bear structural and physiological similarities between the mammalian and the zebrafish kidney, that is, the zebrafish kidneys are homologous to those of humans and mammals, as shown here. The guts, right? So to conduct the research, adult zebrafish were divided randomly into four groups, which had five fish per group and injected with intrapaternally with different concentrations of insulin, which had been prepared beforehand and stored in a cool temperature. They had been prepared um, by serial dilution of insulin to have concentrations of 0 0.01 units per kilogram, 0.1 unit per kilogram, and one unit per kilogram. Um, and the last group of um, zebrafish were injected with saline solution. The fish were anesthetized using an ice bath and um, then they were injected intraperitoneally as shown in this image with 10 microliters of the respective insulin concentration or saline, concentra saline solution. And then they were put in a recovery tank for 30 minutes, after which the fish were euthanized again using an ice bath, and where, and then their kidneys dissected, and prepared for gene expression analysis by PCR and electrophoresis. Also, um, we dissected and extracted the brains of the zebrafish to see if there was any effect on the expression of NH3. Uh, in the brain due to increasing or change in concentration of insulin. 
So the dissected kidneys were pulled together by group and homogenized and purified, homogenized and triazole purified to extract the total RNA as seen in this image here. And then using a spectrophotometer, I measured the RNA concentration to determine the volume of one microgram of RNA necessary to um, necessary to um, make up the complementary DNA to synthesize comp complementary DNA using the thermocycler. And after the complementary DNA was synthesized, I separated this into several tubes, about 36 tubes involving seven tubes for the loading control, the beta actin loading control, and another 29 tubes with the different uh, primers for NHE3A and NHE3B and the master mix as well. And after those were prepared, they were put into the thermocycler for the PCR to begin and then loaded after the PCR process was completed, they were loaded into the gel for the gel electrophoresis and the results were processed. So after the PCR and gel electrophoresis, the results were obtained and our results showed that um, normalized by beta actin, NHE3A expression increased slightly as the insulin concentration increased. It also showed a similar increase in the expression of an activity in NHE3B from smaller concentrations of insulin to a larger concentration of insulin. And this was shown in the kidney. This is consistent with um, data that showed um, that increase of insulin would lead to an increased expression or increased activity of NHG3 in zebrafish kidneys. Now, where we had not had any prior information was in the brain, and we also saw in the brain likewise that with an increased concentration of insulin injected into the zebrafish, um, the data showed that there was an increase in the expression of both NHE3A and NHE3B between um, from the 0 0.01 to 0.1 to 1 unit per kilogram of insulin concentration. Um, there is a decrease shown between the 0 0.01 um, and 0 0.1 um, concentration in NHE3A normalized by beta actin before an increase as it gets to the one unit per kilogram concentration. And this will call for further investigation since not much is known about the um, effects of insulin on NHE3 expression in the brain. But overall, our findings were consistent in the kidney and um, to show that um, increase in insulin in the proximal tubule of the kidney will increase NHE3 expression in zebrafish. So gene expression analysis conduct conducted using PCR revealed that insulin injection stimulated mRNA expression of NHE3A and NHE3B duplicate copies of the NHE3 gene in zebrafish. This data did suggest a link between insulin and NHE3 activity in the proximal tubule of the kidney, and this provides insight into how high blood pressure or hypertension may develop in patients with type 2 diabetes or hyperinsulin anemia because, as discussed previously, insulin may lead to a stimulatory effect on NHE3 activity, which can have a large impact in blood pressure and blood volume. Also, the data does suggest a link between insulin and NHE3 activity in the brain, though further investigation is required on this since not much is known about the link between insulin and NHE3 in the brain. So for future studies, we will be, um, I will increase the number of biological replicates per group and will also perform quantitative PCR studies to determine gene expression of NHE3 and insulin receptor um, normalized against beta actin. And I will also perform uh, the study again to test for different concentrations more than what was um, performed in this study of insulin for the in intraperitoneal injection. 
And here were my references for this project and presentation. I would like to acknowledge and thank um, Dr. Tracy Bell, my research advisor and mentor, and Shireen Black, the doctoral student in our lab, for their guidance, for the knowledge, the education, and experience afforded me by this project. I would also like to thank the Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation, the University System of Maryland OSAMP program, and the NSF and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore for affording me the opportunity to carry out this research and present this research today. Thank you.